Hi, this is Ron Mertens at ronmartblog.com, and I'm here today to talk about Topaz Remask 5. So let's go ahead and start it up here. And I'm going to go Remask 5. Loads up pretty quick, and one of the nice new features is it has a nice tutorial to begin with. Um, before it kind of dropped you off, and if you didn't know how things worked, you had to go seek out one. So it's really nice that they've included this for you. One of the key things that you want to do is go along the edge of your object and uh, make a compute line. And what this does is you want to get some of the colors you don't want plus some of the colors you do want kind of spread across a brush. So I tend to do, use a little wider brush and paint this. Then you can mark green where you want to keep, red that where you want to get rid of content, and then hit the compute mask and have it uh, make an adjustment for you. Now, of course, this is a perfect case example. Uh, most real world scenarios are a lot more complicated. So generally from there, we have to go and make revisions. And so there's brushes and fills in order to help us do that. And we can change our background to see how to look on different backgrounds and make some adjustments. So when we're done, um, we can have it create a mask in Photoshop or um, we can also use this product standalone. So let's go ahead and close that up. I'm going to maximize this. And for people who use Topaz products before, um, I've got to say that this is probably the fastest, most elegant version of any Topaz product I've used. I hope to see other products sort of mimic uh, whatever UI technology they're using for this one because I can tell you that the responsiveness of this is excellent. It's by far the most uh, responsive Topaz product I've ever used. I'm currently using Beta 6, which is a not released product. By the time you uh, see this video, it will be released. And um, hopefully everything that you see here is um, working even better than uh, what I'm showing. So for this demonstration, we can actually look at the original and see that this is kind of a cool scene, but you know it's kind of murky background isn't really doing much for the shot. So we're sitting, imagine a scene like this where we have our uh, umbrella out by the beach. We don't want these kind of skies. We kind of want some nice clear skies. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and make that happen. So what I'm going to do, <clears throat> excuse me, is I'm going to go ahead and come along here and with my compute brush, I'm going to just paint a line and it just switch me over to the tri, tri map mode to separate what I want to keep what I, versus what I want to get rid of. Now, like all things masking, the quality of the result you get is totally dependent on the amount of time you spent spend creating your mask. You know, a pixel perfect mask you can spend a whole day making it elegant. And while Remask, you know, does a lot of magic to make it easier for you, um, there are some things that just require a little more brute force precision. So um, this is a lot you know, easier and faster than using Save or Find Edge in Photoshop, but it's by no stretch, um, you know, uh, a no-op. No it actually requires, you know, some some painting and skills and stuff still. Um, but you can see from here, I've done a pretty good job. Now, one of the things I'll uh, often do is, you know, I see there's a lot of blue that really doesn't need to be part of the compute, and I know that I'm going to get rid of the top and keep the bottom. So what I'll usually do is I'll come along and I'll go ahead and refine that a little bit further. I like to use a fatter brush because it's easier, um, but, you know, the size brush you use is up to you. And I'll kind of come along here. And just kind of keep painting this. And, and what I'm doing here is I'm trying to get rid of some of that excess blue that's not needed because the less wasted information you have in that compute region, the more accurate it tends to be. So I'm just trying to get rid of a little bit more. I'm using a stylus, so that's why you saw that little weird thing that's from my context menu. And I don't have to take this uh, any more than I want to because I'm going to just fill in the whole top anyway. I just don't want to see these little green spots. 
and a couple areas I may choose to get a little bit closer. Now, if I want to zoom, I can always do that and say, let's, you know, get in and come on up here. And if I really wanted to be precise, you know, I could certainly do like that. And when I hit a spot that I didn't mean to hit, I could either make it green or if I wanted just to be part of the compute region, I can adjust my brush and just make that little adjustment there. And how much time I said, you know, I spent on this, like I said, is just kind of up to you. Um, now there are some areas in here I could choose to make pixel perfect or I could just wipe them out like this area through here. And this is kind of a, a personal choice. I don't think this really adds anything um, to the photo. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time making it perfect. Uh, if I wanted to, I could kind of come along like this but I'm going to just wipe out most of it anyway. I don't really care about it. It's not, it's off in the distance and not super relevant. But if I wanted to make sure it was protected, I'd kind of come in here and put that a little bit more in the red. So let's say I'm going to go ahead and keep that and say that I want to keep a little bit more of this stuff through here. So now that I have that, oops, and we can go ahead and do a little bit more of that. Again, how much you do is up to you. Let's go ahead and zoom back out to fit. I could spend a lot of time sort of uh, fine tuning it, but let's just go with that as a starting point. So when I hit compute mask, whoops, sorry, I made one mistake. Good thing to catch though. Um, I actually meant to remove the whole sky. So let's do that again, compute mask. And so you can see it did a pretty good job. You can kind of see where that dome is. You can kind of see the mountain area. This area is a little bit sketchy. Um, how you work with that is kind of up to you. Honestly, it's not a super important part for me. So um, you know, for something like this, I typically would just kind of um, come along come along here and just kind of clean it up manually to get rid of some of that. I'll just kind of make it an even edge roughly. And then once I have something I like, um, I can choose how it goes back into Photoshop through preferences. I like to use the create layer mask options. And that's something you just do once. I hit OK. I've got my mask drag in and then I'm, and I'm going to take this image here and I'm going to hold the shift key to size it proportionally and how I size it, it's up to me let's go ahead and drag the oops say okay drag this under and now you can see before, after, before, after. And if I didn't like this guy, I can come along and add some additional layer here in between here. You know, one option is to go and adjust it. Um, another option is to do a um, cooling filter. And there's you know, different kinds of cooling filters to kind of give it a look that I want. kind of like the brighter one for this scene and I can sort of adjust how much I want to turn it on watch out for banding and again you can see before after so now if I wanted to go do something else to this like let's say I just wanted to go use another cool product by Topaz called Adjust, and maybe make this scene look a little bit more warm. There's this cool autumn preset. I kind of like what that does, but I don't like the kind of grittiness of it all, and it's kind of screwing up my sky. 
So I'll come over here to details, say process details independently. Click OK. I guess rid of all that kind of gritty look. And say OK. Now this is a uh, image taken with a Canon 5DSR, so it's a 50 megapixel uh, image, so it takes a little bit to load. And once that's complete, I'll come in here, I'll control click this layer, it gives me a mask. Then with the other layer selected that I just created from adjust, I'll click create new layer. And now that remove that effect from the sky and only applied it to the area down below. And if I wanted to kind of tone it back a little bit, I could just by changing the layer opacity. And so without much effort, thanks to remask, we went and adjust, we went from this kind of cold, not really inviting scene, something that feels like you're out on the beach at sunset on a nice clear day. Please visit ronmarkblog.com for my video and special discount offer on this product. Thanks. Bye.